The conference is, is being broadcasted today. It's accessible to people who are now perhaps staying in bed and watching us. And that's why we have so many people sitting in the aud auditorium. The first one to, uh, to give a lecture today will going to be uh, Nika Bizilak, uh, who has a presentation, uh, I guess, right? And Anna has joined you. We can start. Okay. Uh, so my name is Nika. Меня зовут Ника. Я театральный режиссер, но также продюсер. И отвечаю за программу фестиваля Кроссингс, которую я сегодня вам представлю. Мы не только создаем фестиваль, но также я работаю в Марибаре в организации Кольт Момент. Мне кажется, важно немножко ввести вас в контекст и рассказать пару слов. Я приехала из маленькой страны, из Словении в которой живут всего лишь 2 миллиона человек. И, и я э, приехала из э, второго по крупности города. И Марибор очень маленький город. И то, что я представляю, это... Program. Um, so uh, there were a lot of uh, international uh, programming in that festival too, um, and it became more interesting uh, for the theater community and for the city. Um, but um, so yeah, still the question why we decided to have our festival too. Um, we have a word independent in the in the name, and we are trying live up to it. So um, in Slovenian context, uh, independent is firstly uh, understood as an opposite to institutional. Um, but uh, I made a, uh, a definition, I wrote the definition of independence here, the state of being free from the control of power of another. Uh, and, uh, this year's um, title of the festival or subtitle of the festival is Cross Without Fear. So we are trying to find other um, things that you can, you must or you should strive to be independent from. Um, but yes, if I go back to, to independent being the opposite of institutional, um, it means that uh, institution inst institutions are public, uh, they have a strong hi hierarchy, uh, they have a steady um, dramatic uh, actors ensembles, they have a logistic uh, and technological infrastructure, they are uh, well financed and, um, and uh, in Slovenia they are coming from a heritage of um, of uh, national identity, of, of s making strong a national identity. And on the other hand, we have a really wide uh, independent scene in Slovenia, as I said, um, and uh, it, the structure of an independent scene allows us to be more flexible, and uh, it comes from um, experimental heritage and um, it's not just in an artistic way, but also in production means it's um, trying to make uh, new forms and new collaborations and, new co and forming new collectives. So that's, that's are some basic criteria in production means that we are having uh, in mind when programming a festival also. 
but of course uh, it changes when you start to program internationally um, because there are different systems or different structures in, uh, in an international uh, landscape. Um, but so um, still to try to answer why we revived the festival, <laughs> I'm going like step by step, um, just uh, making some, um, uh, just presenting the, the terms. Um, is because we still think that uh, thinking about independence of or, or autonomy or um, in artistic way, I don't know, individuality is uh, important. Um, we were speaking also yesterday that festivals are amplifiers and um, we are understanding our festival as an amplifier for, for these issues, so for, for, in for in the starting from the definition of independence. Um, so what's the, the other thing that you can be uh, independent from besides being the opposite of institutional? Um, okay, it's really small. But um, yeah. Um, so some performances in, in uh, different contexts, they are uh, tied to their political environments. Uh, and so you can, uh, you can indi think independently when you're programming it. Um, you also can um, jump across and uh, not um, trying to force them into the context, into your community. Uh, and you uh, know that you're opening some new uh, point of dialogue when you're programming that. Um, you can uh, think independently and program independently from the market. Um, I was speaking yesterday that, yesterday that I think and that maybe m one of uh, the things that I learned as a producer um, that you are a lot of times tied to some programming um, guidelines uh, that are uh, forced or that are framed by uh, your uh, fin finance, fin how's, the, how's the English word? From finance, financers, thank you. Um, so uh, how can you, uh, how can you um, insist on thinking outside of these boxes? Um, and um, then in, I mean, there were a lot of things that I, I'm talking now addressed yesterday, so maybe my presentation <laughs> is a bit like, uh, uh, but with the, with the point of possibility and accessibility, so how to think to program something that is, uh, and think independently, from who are you addressing and who are you um, inviting and make it as accessible to artists uh, to be uh, part of, of in one frame that are it's maybe not accessible for them and also making a program and some issues accessible to your community. Um, so uh, d like for us it was important to stay uh, to, to have a festival where we allow ourselves to think independently from all that. And I missed a lot of things, but I think that the context is uh, understood. Um, and um, the title of my, my, my presentation is How to be Independent and Yet Connective. Um, and again, of course, I'm going to the, to the basic op opposition between independent and uh, institutional. And um, so uh, how to be connective even if you want to even if you want to uh, to be independent um, so there we hear a lot of times that okay you want to be independent but you want to have money to do that you want animals, you want to do that and that and that but um, how can you then criticize your uh, bread provider so that's uh, a strong point that we are uh, always um, um, but um, making some connections with the 
with the in inside the city of Maribor and uh, trying to overcome our problems and the issues that that people are thinking about the independent scene. Um, we are making a lot of connections with with uh, institutions in uh, in Maribor as such. And it's not, uh, of, of course, it helps us to overcome our logistic or uh, finance um, difficulties, uh, but it, it helps us also to reach some new uh, audiences. Uh, but it actually um, turned out to be a good thing uh, in the programs that they are making. So um, this is uh, how we are trying to help ourselves and uh, uh, yet trying to um, to address uh, these things what's accessible to us and what's accessible to us. Um, uh, another thing is um, how to be connected. Mm. Um. Um. This year we are, uh, for example, um, inviting some quite op some some performances that are coming from different political um, political uh, that's also um, that's also something when you try to be connective and try to open issues, of course. Um, but uh, main things that are uh, that are in our concern. Um, is how to um, how to be uh, how to build a solidarity, and um, this starts again with our position, w how we work. Uh, I, I said that we have <coughs> that he we have our own venue, that we are on an organization that that has a space, um, but we are part of a larger artistic community. And um, we share that space uh, with an art gallery and with a photo museum, and with uh, we share the space for the organization of uh, film organization that are ma making a cinematic program. <coughs> so um, this is something where we learn and try to make connections also in the festival program of interdisciplinarity and um, uh, cro trying to cross uh, sectoral thinking of the program, uh, but. Um, as I said, we because we are so much involved in that community, we are trying to stay independent of, because you addressed the question yesterday, is it the festival of, or of performing arts? Um, we are trying in, in that to find what we think that it's still really theatrical and that we can offer uh, really in a contemporary and um, yeah, in a contemporary way or uh, as I always say, in an uh, independent way, that it's not something that the big theaters are doing in our city or the big festivals in our city, but still not something that um, get lost in, in terms of everything that we are programming in our this uh, artistic space and still finding uh, the answers to what it's still theater and still uh, making it as open as possible, but still addressing this question all the time. Um, because it's important uh, also for the audiences, but also for us how to understand performing arts. Uh, yeah, but this is a theoretical question, but it's something that we are trying to, to address all the time. Um, uh, yeah, so these are some some uh, some thoughts uh, about that, which are very vague, and it's really uh, frustrating because are uh, they are really vague, and there are a lot of points that um, that we addressed yesterday, and that were really inspirational for me too. Um, but to try to answer at the at the at the end, um, after also yesterday's experience, uh, why I still think that it's important that we are making a festival, even if it's small, even if it is the fifth festival in the city, um, 
it uh, also makes us uh, the opportunity to, to network like that <laughs> and to share ideas like that that would not be possible if we were just making our annual and seasonal program. And um, it, it brings program and issues into our community and maybe addresses some audiences that are not involved in other uh, performing arts uh, programs because they don't feel that they can access them. So I still think that to use a festival as a tool of an amplifier is good for us too in a small community that we are doing. Um, so, yes. I will finish my, my presentation now and try it. Maybe it, it, it will open some discussion and I will um, answer that. I have some some of the things that are in the program here. Uh -huh, okay, I forgot one important thing again, uh, but it's again a struggle of uh, how to survive as an independent producer and artist in Slovenia, <laughs> uh, which is a trigger a showcase. Um, how to think uh, about different ways of programming if you struggle and, and uh, strive to make something is that we uh, invested in our international program this year and uh, we are still um, continuing to make space for independent pr uh, uh, production in Slovenia and try to present it as much as, uh, as we can and represent it. So the, uh, the idea of collaboration uh, came up and this is the idea of Trigger Showcase. Trigger Showcase is a showcase of independent productions from, uh, from um, Slovenia that will be held as a part of uh, the program of, of crossings. And, uh, and uh, it's uh, that every, um, every uh, independent producer uh, was invited to participate uh, with, their, uh, with their performance and we are all uh, inviting showcasers to see that. And it's again uh, one of the good examples of collaboration. Yeah. So this is it from my part. Thank you, Nika. If you have any questions, you can ask them. I would like to talk to you about independence. Independent theatre, non-repertory theatre, state theatre. It was a very interesting conversation with you. And uh, today, like a hundred years ago, it's a territory where our train bends itself and new, like uh, in early 20th century. And theatre keeps uh, redefining its borders and its uh, speciality idiosyncrasy and I think this is the key importance of independent theatre. So my question to you is, oh I have two questions actually. First, uh, what do you believe is success? How do you define success in your work? How do you um, measure your success or failure? And my second question is, uh, is there a possibility of solidarity among independent theatres? What I mean, a small uh, private, uh, not state-run uh, companies with no space have no chance of surviving. They can only survive and uh, realize themselves when they get together. Uh, like a hundred years ago, uh, there was a cartel of four in France where four independent companies got together and it uh, and they could survive. That is a key example. Or in Estonia, f independent companies five years ago made an association, a network, and this uh, cooperation led to creating a space, a venue, and couture. Uh, it's called Vaba Lava. It's a great example to me, uh, a great example of networking, of cooperating with a, a common goal. They all have their independent uh, creative goals, views, their own vision of theater, but their main uh, opponent are institutions, as you justly mentioned. 
So when you talk about solidarity of independent Slovenian artists, what do you mean? Are there examples of success in this uh, field? Are there success stories uh, in uh, redefining, revising, reviving theater, and successes in uh, getting together so in solidarity? first question is about how I uh, understand success. Um, one of the things that, um, of course, uh, you are trying to put yourself on the map uh, and trying to be relevant in an artistic community, uh, or I'm talking in larger scales now, but um, some efforts that are directly addressing also the, the question about solidarity and how to survive together is to stay also focused on how you are producing art and to be just in that terms. Because if you are small, you, you, um, there's always a pressure of um, working too much and working on very on a voluntary basis and it's uh, burning out people and it's maybe just short term because of this motivation and then you then you crash down um, so for now what i'm personally uh, focused on and also as an organization we are trying to make a juster environment which is really hard because you are always connected connected to uh, structural problems that are not just in your organization, it's in the political and economic system that we live globally, <laughs> but you still can manage to answer to some of that problems uh, in your smaller uh, structure. Uh, so we are trying to hire people, to pay them uh, um, uh, honestly or justly, or what's the word, uh, fair. Um, so this is something that it's a important criteria of success for me right now to to work um, fair. <laughs> um, we uh, uh, how to be successful? Of course, I think that that in how you are thinking about your program, that you are still trying to make s to um, make some space for really. Um, experimenting um, so if w we had we have this privilege now that we are uh, state founded and we have uh, more money uh, so that we can uh, program different things and um, because we know that that we want to be visible and that we uh, think that the things that we are producing or, or, or making a space for artistic um, research that should be also visible. Of course, we are also focusing, like I said, how to be visible, how to uh, go to some, uh, uh, for starters, national festivals and then international festivals. So this is something where you want to communicate. Ben, and of course, it translates as a success. Um, but uh, like I said, we are trying to make open spaces for creation, which is also a criteria or measurement of success. Um, so like three things, trying to put yourself on the map, trying to still make open space for creation and trying to create a just working environment. When you talk about uh, state f uh, finance, what uh, organization, what is the structure, sorry, of your budget, how you are financially dependent or independent? the structure of your budget? Uh, we are always financially dependent, but uh, um, we w now we have also a state fund, which is the biggest fund that we had. We are financed for four years program. Uh, we are financed from the city, which is also a program, finance, uh, program uh, financing. Um, and we are applying for diff other different um, possibility of funds that we are also quite successfully getting. Um, there is not much private money in our organization. I mean, we are um, the association, which means that, that uh, we also have some contributions from our members. 
uh, w we gain a lot from uh, not from ticket sales but from selling our performances when they go and uh, and um, tour um, but our special special position that it's in a relation to maybe sponsorship or um, I don't remember the English word that I want to use now. Uh, it's the relation with the owner of our building. But as I said, it's not a direct uh, direct relationship between us and them. It's a relationship of uh, a community of all these uh, artists and artistic organizations that are in the space. And they are, for the first three years, uh, we've been able to be there just uh, by paying electricity and maintaining the building. And now we have a small rent, but it's still not uh, not uh, high or commercial. So this is one of the um, solidarity relationships with the private sector, or um, and within a community. To answer your previous question, also we help each other, like with uh, with collaboration inside this um, artistic community, which is quite uh, important for that we can sustain our work, yeah. In the beginning of your presentation, you said a couple of times, uh, used the word independence, but now we see that the city supports you, the owner of the building, the Ministry of Culture. Then uh, what are the goals of you and the society and the states that are common? Why does the state and the city support you? How are you useful to the city and the power and the society? Are there goals that are common? Uh, uh, as, as I said, um, uh, it's often that, that you say, okay, you, c you are independent just if you are not financed. I, I mean, I think that that's that's not the case. Um, I mean, yesterday we heard three presentations of three really big and well-financed festivals that are still artistically or even politically making some steps that are not actually, uh, that it's not linked that they shouldn't be uh, financed by uh, states or... Um, the question, why are we relevant or where do we, uh, can you repeat the question? Um. Let me uh, decipher, explain it a bit, my question. In Russia, any networks or collaborations of young independent uh, artists are only supported by the state to bring these people together and keep them under control. Such associations only years later understand that they've been created and supported just to control them. Any time when in any region of the country there appear a unity, a group of independent groups, they discover later that they're being controlled and used, exploited. I will not give examples, but there are stories when a center, I will not point, but an art center, youth center can be open. Uh, 20 independent companies, professional or amateur companies will start to work there. And three years later, you see that this platform becomes the platform of a political party of the United Russia. And there, so the artists just like have to see and discover that they are under the party. Or an awful example platform uh, by Kirill Serebrnikov, the director. He w it was created by Kirill in year 2010, supported by the government, by President Medvedev. And uh, that platform project was a place where young independent artists of different disciplines could create collaborations, uh, joined research, creating new forms. And years, several years later, this very project platform that brought together all young forces of Russian art was targeted by their uh, 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 in constitution uh, by the uh, judges of Russia, by the laws of Russia. Do you see similar traps in your work? 
in your country. If you don't, I just uh, warn you that they happen in, my, in our country. No, th th there is not so radical in Slovenia. But um, the, the, the important thing to know is that we have independent commissions that are uh, selecting uh, which program to finance uh, in, in, uh, on the level of the city and on the level of the state. So there are professionals who are, who are uh, evaluating the, the applications. Um, but um, there are some structural um, problems that are addressing social and political issues in Slovenia that we also are trying to get involved with like civic movements and uh, um, we have an association on a national level uh, um, jo uh, 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 a unity of NGOs that is trying to address those issues that are sometimes also linked to a problematic of censorship or a, or a social problematic about ar artist, artists. Uh, but it's not so radical as in Russia. And um, there, um, it's, it's more than uh, from time to time you are making some alliances or collaborations that then it, it turned turns out to be something else if you're trying to to be a part of a bigger prog project. These are the experiences that went uh, south from there. But um, um, in what fund you are uh, receiving or you are accepting, we also made some choices, choices to reject some of them um, because we didn't want to take part in something. Yeah. Any questions? May I uh, open the floor for questions? I was listening to Nika just from the context of this big city and a huge festival. And in paradox, uh, I still resonated because as part of the Golden Mask Festival, I'm working on the Institution of Theatre, which is an educational prog program financed after the main program of the Golden Mask Repertoire gets financed. So as uh, uh, a small organization, part of a big one, we rely on networking, support, no money support, any kind of support. So being a small project as part of a bigger project financed by the state, our relationship becomes suddenly similar to a small uh, festival in a small resort town like yours. Uh, so I would probably suggest that the uh, directors of bigger festival comment on how they uh, plan their off program. How is the partnership uh, works? Are there f uh, is there support? that involves no money, any other kinds of support of these minor projects of yours. And also I'm interested in the following. When you are a big festival and you address somebody with a proposal of partnership, they regard you not as a very rich project, but at least you think you are somebody who, who commissions a service. They require a technical description, like they regard you, the festival, as a commissioner. They cannot think about a partnership with a festival as a common project with a festival. They just think that you give them an idea and they perform the service for you. Is it relevant to you, to other big festivals? Do you note similar relationships in, in Maribor, at, in other places? Maybe some comments? Well, I think we uh, the Polish paradox is that the, the bigger organization collecting all, uh, not all, but the, the over thousand organi independent orga organization from the third sector was established uh, 15 years ago by nowadays Minister of Culture, who is now the first censor in the, in the country. So 
this is the paradox and uh, I don't think that any networks of association in Poland are uh, really mm, uh, functioning, but the sector itself, it's quite uh, representative, I must say, but uh, I don't believe to that uh, networking on, on, on that, uh, um, let's say, common platform or something like that. Of course, we work with, <coughs> in our program, especially in Generator, which is the platform for um, partners and rather young artists and rather artists who are um, starting up with their ideas and are connected to our main idea to every year. So then, uh, in fact, there are independent curators for that program who are working on Malta permanently and for the whole year making the um, uh, connection with uh, um, artists and other partners. And this is in fact the biggest part of the festival because it's about, I don't know, maybe 200 events, but not only artistic events, but also some uh, civic actions, some uh, discussions and projects that are developing during the whole year because I think it's one of the most important things of the festival is not just to have this festi festivity time but also to, to go a bit uh, deeper and to, to, to go uh, a bit longer with the partners if it's possible or to prepare something or just to continue. Yesterday I said about these gardens in the local um, uh, uh, communities that that was something like little cultural center uh, uh, open for the community there at, at, uh, etc and in this that was the kind of an official platform to the local um, uh, councils not the city council but every uh, every uh, part of the city have the little council that decide what they change or how they change the, 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 the their environment and that was something what happened during the action. So we, co we cooperate, but we don't make any official networks or something like that. I'm not from big festival, but I, I'd like to say that I think that independen independence is not only a question of money. If you would uh, talk about opera houses and uh, small contemporary opera festival, it's uh, the question of uh, structure, because I can't believe that huge opera houses with huge mechanisms, they can... Uh, they can they can emotionally even um, survive in contemporary opera situation because uh, traditional opera singers or orchestras, for them it's very complicated to work with contemporary materials. So uh, it's easier to be free in smaller structures than to uh, experiment and make some uh, free artistic decisions uh, in bigger structures such as opera houses or big opera festivals. And also, I think that audience is also quite important aspect. Big opera houses are dependent on audiences. They need to sell tickets, they need to have it on repertoire, and you uh, can't uh, plan that it will be great success and sold out each month several times, so it's huge risks. Huge risk and opera houses do not take such risks so often. Yeah, so I would say so that uh, it's not only about money, question of money. If we talk about new forms and new genres, that are possible in uh, in independent theatre and that flourish in independent theatre. But what are the trends with the new forms in your festival? What new forms? What new formats? Anna was, uh, for example, showing a video uh, about uh, an opera. But what do you mean, uh, concrete, um, precisely, when you say new forms? 
when I was talking about new forms, I was explaining the, the relationship between uh, institutional and uh, independent. For this year's edition of the festival, we are not having um, an explicit new form that, that I will uh, address it as it, but uh, in our seasonal program, we are uh, for now for this year and have uh, this year, yeah, we were focusing on how you provide productional environment uh, for a new form to emerge. So it was, mm, but it's not part of the festival now because it's a complex form that cannot be part of the festival. <laughs> um, but the invited performances are more like um, cross, cross genre, not like a new form. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to ask you. The fact that you have uh, a resort city, touristic city, and perhaps not uh, very international, but quite local, uh, does it help you or, or, or not, or uh, pre prevent something? Like your uh, location, your social-cultural uh, environment. Theatre culture in Slovenia is very strong and uh, there is a lot going on, so there is a th theatre community that, there is that is also an audience for a festival like that. And uh, just with the, with the festival we cannot... Um, uh, I mean it's always a problem who are you addressing in your city, but I think that, uh, that it will show now because the festival is in May, if maybe with a four-year effort of a steady program we created some kind of a of community of audience that will also come to that um, but we are working on some programs that are making uh, that uh, um, that are creating network in a region with Zagreb with Graz with with Budapest so that's also something that we are working on but this is an artistic community more maybe and so now it's um, in terms of our regular program, we have some visitors, like I said, that are not going to the National Theatre or the Puppet Theatre, and they, we felt like a lack of that, and there were people interested, but I'm, I'm also curious what will happen to that edition of the festival. I wanted to ask uh, a question about the uniqueness and the mission of the festival. For example, I'm from St. Petersburg, and we have a lot of independent uh, companies that that remain uh, just a course uh, of directors and, and artists uh, that graduate, uh, that we were like one group in the university, and then they graduated, and they stay independent. But in what sense they're independent? They like don't have finance, don't have venue. Um, and those who create their venues, they lose their uniqueness. They become a repertoire theater and try to survive by selling tickets. Um, and they lose this independency. So I'd like to understand what is um, the uniqueness of your independency um, that you've outlined. of crossings were also addressing uh, why it's the name crossings also because it was cross genre because it was trying to to understand um, it is a really local issue actually but I don't know uh, making space for some contemporary object theater or puppetry uh, contemporary puppetry to bringing some more contemporary dance performances into into a visible uh, place in the city some more device pieces because people from the city were used to see dramatic theater in the national uh, environment um, mm, theater. <laughs> um, what's our independency, if you ask, is um, in our national context, like I said, if you're an institution, you have this logistic and technological infrastructure that you can operate with. We built that venue by ourselves, and that's also another relationship how we are attached to it. It's a small venue for 50 uh, 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 audience members, so it's not a huge theater. It's a really small black box theater um, that grew as a communal uh, 
Yes, it's a communal space for also other programs from this community artistic that, that, that I said. Um, try, because from the first three editions were really understanding independency in terms of uh, how the work is produced. Um, for this edition, we, we, are, we just started to think about independency on other levels, like, like also Anna said now. So it's maybe to, to program some things that are more risky in uh, aesthetic uh, um, terms, but uh, we also uh, are going a bit political with the, um, with the program. Yeah, did I answer the question? Thank you so much. I think we can uh, pass on to um, and pass the word to Maria Belina, the program director of the Golden Mask Festival, and we have some time to to talk about uh, new genres and new forms of of the way um, that a, a bigger festival is creating. То, как, то, что мы сейчас называем фестиваль «Золотая маска», это в общем, конгломерат проектов, в основе которых, безусловно, находится национальная театральная премия и фестиваль спектаклей, выдвинутых на национальную театральную премию «Золотая маска», что, безусловно, накладывает огромное количество обязательств, ответственности на организаторов, дирекцию, которую, собственно, я представляю. И э, мы э, здесь видим структуру, я прокомментирую ее чуть, чуть позднее. Но действительно, в фундаменте находится фестиваль, э, фестиваль спектаклей, выдвинутых на премию и, собственно, э, завершающаяся церемония вручения премии. Э, мы, э, как бы, все время есть... Э, как сказать, от себя даже скажу, какой-то момент сомнения да, в нашей подвижности, в том, насколько э, вот этот сложный механизм э, устроен так, чтобы соответствовать актуальному моменту. И это, наверное, ну, в случае сегодняшнего нашей, раз, нашего разговора в эти два дня самая важная тема, э, как такая большая структура, которая может показаться не слишком подвижной и, и такой вот неповоротливой, да, может, тем не менее, абсолютно как бы естественно заниматься поиском, заниматься новыми формами театра, заниматься актуальным театром. Я как раз сосредоточусь на, в первой части на, собственно, конкурсе. И... Ну, я вряд ли смогу как бы, показывать или рассказывать о, о программе в подробностях, потому что она ну, действительно большая. И каждый раз, когда мы говорим о фестивале, мы рискуем как бы, оказаться в поле слов «самый большой», там, «грандиозный», «гигантский», «самый важный», «самая престижная премия». Да, ну, безусловно, это связано с тем, что это национальная премия. Как устроена э, премия фестиваль «Золотая маска»? Э, «Золотая маска» была учреждена в 1993 году Союзом театральных деятелей. Это принципиально независимая от государства организация, которая остается таковой до сих пор. Э, и, соответственно, премия была учреждена тоже как независимая премия. Э, важный момент, она с самого начала э, как бы вот была буквально термином было то, что эта премия профессиональная. Что это означало для учредителей, собственно, и для нас, кто делает, проводит это в течение 25 лет. Профессиональный отбор, работа экспертов, профессиональных критиков, которые формируют, собственно, список номинантов премии и участников, что равно участники фестиваля. И профессиональная жюри, состоящая из практиков уже, которая смотрит, собственно, этот, эти спектакли, отобранные экспертами, и принимает решения. Эксперты работают в течение сезона. 
Это эксперты по музыкальному театру и по драматическому театру, которые начинают работать примерно в декабре каждого года и заканчивают в конце октября каждого года. И смотрят сезон, вот тот сезон, который начинается, тогда, когда они приступают к, который идет, когда они приступают к работе. Золотая маска – фестиваль всей страны. Москва и Петербург как бы находятся в равной, в равной степени внимания, что и все другие города России. И это тоже важный момент. Принцип равенства всех спектаклей, которые были рождены, которые были поставлены в этом сезоне. Эксперты смотрят, конечно же, определенную часть на видео. Мы ждем заявок от театров, и они присылают видео. И э, эксперты совершают огромное количество командировок. Э, это в несколько десятков э, и в общем, с, уже за сотни командировок в течение работы. И, безусловно, просмотр спектаклей в Москве и Петербурге. Э, эксперты работают также совершенно независимо. У них есть председатель из собственных рядов. Мы, дирекция, только находимся рядом. Наша задача обеспечить... Э, как раз таки независимость их работы. Эксперты постоянно обсуждают увиденное. И это как бы процесс, который как бы все время проходит вот в этом вот обсуждении, рефлексии об увиденном. И тем не менее, золотая маска ⁇ это целая как бы структура номинаций. Подключить Натали сейчас на номинации. Номинации «Золотой маски» сейчас — это вот такой большой список. Его даже в схему довольно трудно организовать. И здесь можно увидеть, что на каждую основную номинацию да, приходится целый список частных номинаций. Собственно, эта система, которая была ну, вот не в том виде начиналась, она была гораздо более скромной и лаконичной, но как раз в течение времени и а, постоянный вот этот процесс работы с а, реальным а, театром, с реальной действительностью театральной привел к тому, что вот сейчас эта структура номинаций такая. Она закреплена в положении премии «Золотая маска», то есть это буквально наш устав, по которому эксперты работают. Ну и, собственно, вот встречаются два важнейших момента да, работы по отбору спектаклей для фестиваля. Живая театральная реальность, которая постоянно предлагает какие-то новые события, не просто новые спектакли, а новый язык, новые приемы, новую эстетическую реальность. Да. И вот такая схема, которая ну, как будто бы должна ограничивать, должна, ну или не должна, да, то есть ограничивает ли она экспертов, как им работать с тем, что, в общем, им предлагается шкаф с полками, куда нужно разложить спектакли. Ну, как бы в ракурсе нашей темы сейчас, да, об исследовании, о поиске новых форм, мне кажется, интересно думать об этой системе номинаций как о как бы инструменте анализа да, театральной действительности. Это не такие закрепленные полки, закрытые и туда спокойно для порядка кладешь вещи. Да. Это определенный инструмент, да, довольно сложно устроенный, который можно ну, накладывать на театральный процесс, на эту картину, которую видят эксперты, да, и тем или иным образом каждый год интерпретировать реальность, которая, собственно, им встречается. Что в этом инструменте, что в его устройстве важно? А, ну, наверное, самое главное, это особенно для как бы, европейского театра, да, это сочетание драмы и музыкального театра, что ну, как бы не, не, не было очевидно в самом начале, сейчас уже в рамках «Золотой маски» кажется естественно, и тем не менее. А, драма Драматический театр, театр кукол с одной стороны, опера, балет, современный танец с другой стороны. И 
конечно же, все равно есть некая граница между ними, потому что у нас работают действительно два экспертных совета по музыкальному театру и по драматическому, и два жюри по музыкальному театру и по драматическому. И тем не менее, ну, как бы это сочетание, это нахождение в одном рисунке, да, в, одной, в одной схеме, по-моему, очень важно. А, у нас есть... Единая номинация для балета и современного танца. Это тоже такой, как бы, такая интересная деталь этого, этого, этого нашего как бы, номинационного, номинационной структуры. А, совершенно, современный, номинация современный танец if you see something strange moving, is it a contemporary dance or is it like a contemporary belly? Uh, you can't really define perhaps all the time uh, exactly what is there, what you see, because genres cross. Um, and uh, within the drama theater, we have a formal uh, distinction between like what is big drama and what is small form. Um, uh, And we define it that if, uh, if like small form, it's if it's below 200 uh, viewers in the audience. If it's more than 200 people, then we call it big form. But there is a whole circle of uh, aesthetic questions, uh, whether it's a big form, and uh, and here this consideration, uh, this sorry, this uh, uh, distinction is not so evident anymore. What can be called like big form and what can be called smaller form? Also, we have nomination musical. And they're also on the operetta. Uh, the genres were. Когда мы можем наблюдать это в рамках золотой маски? Сейчас очередной этап. Мы видим довольно интересные мюзиклы, которые были написаны уже сейчас и вполне современно, интересно поставлены в сейчас в театрах России. Таким образом, ну, вот то, о чем я говорю, да, это э, как бы как-то логически устроенная штука, да, механизм, который помогает, безусловно, экспертам uh, в… Uh, what, uh, uh, Another nomination is the experiment uh, that is relevant to our topic, I would say, most of all. It was, the nomination appeared in 1999. Uh, it appeared in the charter, in the structure. It was the same as, uh, as it happened with the contemporary dance. We just, when we realized that uh, all over Russia, we see more and more performances that we could call strange. Uh, that are complicated to, to define whether it's drama or music, whether they're dancing or talking, um, and what do we do with it? How do we deal with it? Nomination was first uh, called Novation, in, like innovation that it, um, it was just uh, stating that we have something new. Uh, we need to admit that there is something new. But within time, it uh, was called experiment. But these are just the terms. First uh, performances that were nominated for, uh, uh, for this nomination uh, um, in the category of experiment These were performances of uh, Evgeny Grishkovets, uh, who was just entering the, the stage and uh, talking as an ordinary person, just, just telling some stories of, from his life. Uh, then we saw some uh, performances that walked at the border of drama and, and music, um, and cross-genre uh, performances, interdisciplinary performances. But when you look at the 
uh, at this category and uh, what performances appeared uh, and were nominated uh, was starting from uh, 1999. Uh, you see that uh, Russia was broadening uh, the context and uh, meeting some international uh, performances. So you see the really the development um, um, of of Russian stage, of Russian perspective. Uh, and it has some, uh, then there appeared some documentary performances uh, where people um, already used, where artists used some documents already to make uh, performances. Then uh, Vorepaev with his uh, oxygen performance uh, um, appeared there on stage and his new approach is uh, something that is very well known outside of Russia. Uh, then uh, there was there were presented um, performances that went to the city that uh, started to uh, appear on uh, non-theatrical venues. Um, and uh, in 2019 uh, in the experiment category there are 12 performances and we see the whole spectrum, uh, the whole range of what is there experimental in Russian theater. It's site-specific uh, performances. For example, the board of uh, jury are um, traveling to, um, to see it to the Rostov on Don uh, because it's site-specific performance. Then there is a performance uh, poetry. It's a walk um, around suburban parts of Moscow. There are some experiments with new academic music, and the, which are reflected uh, um, in the uh, performance mainly of opera uh, that takes place in the museum. I won't be in, like mentioning all 12 of them, but this is a interesting, uh, this is a very like, telling um, picture when you look at it uh, and when you see all these 12 performances as an, as an overview. What does this, what does the nomination mean? Sometimes there is a risk or approach that experiment becomes like a ghetto for young independent companies. Um, where they and that their performances can be viewed only within this realm, only on this territory, uh, because they can't be like placed on all other all other shelves. Um, you can view it this way. Um, that this is like an island of, exper of experiment for young uh, artists, where people and experts discuss this type of theatre. But uh, anyway, there are people who appear on this, uh, on this category uh, for many times, had appeared. And within years, they stay, everything what they create, it stays within the point of view of this um, category. And perhaps the uh, better uh, like big drama theater in St. Petersburg, uh, the general, the artistic director of this uh, f uh, first of this sorry of this big theater of this big venue, uh, first he was uh, always nominated for the experiment category, uh, but now he's already a director of a big uh, of a big venue, <coughs> of a major venue, and for a long time um, we see that his performances are, are present and dominated for the big form of um, like big dramatic form, or perhaps uh, Dmitry Krimov, who is uh, um, used to be also always appear in the category of uh, experiment, and now you, his name is connected for uh, such phenomenon of uh, uh, theater of set designer, theater of, of an artist. Uh, but now we see his performances more and more that appear in the category of uh, drama. Um, for example, Alexander Monatskov's uh, opera um, Snigurochka was, uh, it was awarded the Golden Mask and it's new academic music. But uh, this year, 
uh, it already is in the category of like, big forms. So it like hopped uh, uh, this fence over the category to to other to like standard bigger forms, and we see this this movement going. Uh, when experts uh, question themselves, they approach uh, openly each time to the season. They get this wide perspective of uh, and make decisions um, about what they're going to include in the um, in the list of the performances of the season. We're in the, we're within with structure, and uh, each year we have a lot of uh, a long list of nominations. And when you see what's going to be brought to Moscow and uh, what is the competition festival, you uh, see everything that stands in a row. That uh, one year we bring to, uh, for example, at the. You see that the Golden Mask uh, brings the performance uh, that would be played on the um, on the big venue like uh, the Bolshoi Theatre. At the same time, uh, somewhere in the basement, uh, and sm a small new drama performance, uh, and that would take place uh, simultaneously in one day. And that's why Golden Mask, uh, in this regard, it is like the territory of of movement, it tries to move the hierarchy to establish some network and link between, um, between different genres. I think, um, uh, and out of that, uh, new questions, new ideas emerge. And when we say that this hierarchy is uh, rebuilt and this network is changed, we see that leaders change. Uh, who are the leaders and the activists of the Russian theater? Uh, we can each time call different names, uh, like ten, a decade ago and now. Uh, the lead leaders have changed. Some aesthetic tendencies have changed. Uh, something that emerged in the experiment category So some phenomena uh, are already now presented uh, and dominated for larger films. A uh, bright example is all again connected to music. For example, new academic music uh, has entered uh, not only musical, um, musical theater nominations, but uh, a wider range of big dramas. So for a large scale musical performance, now we have prose of Vladimir Ranyev, um, Alexander Manatskov performances, um, which used to be new forms, which used to be new academic music, and now it's already presented um, in other nominations. You can see names. Um, in this or that nomination, we see lead that leaders change. I would say that in connection to the context and to the question of the conference, it's important that experts uh, question themselves. What is this? Uh, how do you open it? With what key? Um, where do you put it? This is uh, something like a fundamental phenomena uh, that is uh, the, the competition program is uh, f the foundation. But the structure is really even more varied and more complicated. We have a lot of side projects. Um, that like encircle the festival, encircle the competition program. And sometimes we see that the the award and the festival perhaps is not the core, but uh, stands already along some of together in a row with some some other um, projects. Because this is the structure again. And what other side projects uh, are there besides the competition program and besides the award ceremony? 
There is a non-competition program that is called uh, Children's Weekend and Moscow Plus. Plus. In this project, we we tour um, all over Russia, performances all over Russia. That after the performance, the management of uh, the Golden Mask Festival, they decide where to tour performances so that everyone would, would have access as much as possible to what is happening in, in theater. Also, there is a, a, mas a golden mask in the city. A golden mask in the city is uh, when we take some of the performances and we bring them to the venues that are that used to be not theatrical ve venues. There is the project called Golden Mask Online, uh, which deals with uh, broadcasting. Again, it's about spreading access, um, where you can uh, like anyone can access a performance uh, that is broadcasted online or is broadcasted in the cinema. Um, uh, another project is Institute of Theatre, uh, because we thought it's, imp it's important to educate professionals uh, and um, to create conferences like this. Uh, we um, raise a lot of questions uh, about the degree of uh, professionality, uh, of professionalism in like, among. Um, specialists of theater. Also, we publish books. Um, this is part of our, of our work, of creating books about theater and about theater tendencies. Mm, talking about Masca, Masca Plus. This is a project that we created 10 years ago, and this is an off program. Um, if we use the terms of uh, like terms of other festivals, we have curators uh, who select uh, the program. And these are the performances that are not nominated for the award, but they uh, often new language, often new topics, uh, bring up new names, something that can grow afterwards and become big phenomena, big aesthetic phenomena. And the Institute of Theatre is also a project that I want to, spare, to, like, to pay special attention to. Structurally, it has two parts, is a, um, artistic laboratories, We're under the control of like curators, under the supervision of curators, uh, students develop some topics. Anton Florov is the curator of the Institute of Theatre, and his task is like um, capturing ideas that are in the air uh, and formulating what, uh, like suggesting, formulating what topics, what we're going to investigate, what we're going to research. Uh, um, we ask curators um, and invite curators who could uh, also suggest something interesting and propose new ideas uh, to us, uh, like ideas of uh, creative laboratories and who could develop an issue and uh, show us what is there, what is inside. Uh, sometimes laboratories uh, work uh, um, for several months and uh, people come on weekends and uh, develop their project. Sometimes this is just a conference or laboratory that takes place uh, during a weekend. We're proud of, uh, for example, of our laboratory of uh, for visual uh, art, uh, visual visual theater, and we used to have students uh, um, uh, that experiment is part of their institutional structure. Every festival we've spoken about is a confirmation of the fact that experiment 
can be part of the institution. Like Anna spoke yesterday about the NOAA festival, uh, which uh, does not work together with big opera houses, does not uh, fight for its with them, but Anna came with us, came to us with the major Lithuanian award that her uh, production gained. So yesterday she got this award, today she's our guest and she represents the non-commercial music theater of her country. And in the videos we saw yesterday and could recognize some of the trends, some of the signs uh, of what we see in our country. Just a story to share with you. I'm a director over Theater Center, uh, uh, named after Marholder, and our mission is supporting young artists and experimentation. And in my contract, I have the criteria of success, my own criteria. There are many. So some of them are, we need to be nominated for the experiment category in the Golden Mask. Since we are experimental s platform, we need to be as experiment. So this year I will get their bonus at work because our performance was nominated for the Golden Mask Experimentation category, Innovation category. It's very funny because uh, our Cabaret Voltaire production, Italian fut futurists, uh, they imagine they should have been happy to get a state award or state finance. But we are not state uh, award. I, I, I assure you, Lena knows it because she is part of the uh, expert board. For, she's been part of the expert board for many years and she was there when there was a risk. Our independence was at risk. And Lena was some of the people who stood to defend our independence and to state the truth and defend us. Because I do believe that, uh, and I'm not boasting here, not bragging, but uh, the moment of absolute freedom of experts is their independence from the founders of the festival, or from the sponsors of the festival, and even from the administration of the festival, is their guarantee of quality. That theater true, which is one of the nomination nominators in the festival, with two performances. We've Keep he we kept hearing this name from experts for two years, and we thought this is the type of theatre that can never find its way to the Golden F Mask nomination, because the experts would never select it. But this year, we see two of their shows in among the nominations of the Golden Mask. So this constantly confirmed uh, freedom of uh, a free expert selection decisions prove that we can never regret our nominations. L let me ask you a question about experts in Russia. An expert in Russia is a theater critic with due background and a wide uh, a spectator experience. So f I would like to ask all of our guests, what is an expert to you? Because to me, it seems that expert opinion is rather, uh, some ex an expert is rather a curator. What is the difference between a curator and an expert? How do you see it? Я не вижу никакой разницы между экспертом и куратором. Masha, do you see experts only survived in Russia, experts and bears. This term in English is not a very easy term. Probably if we're looking for an equivalent, we should talk about selectors, those who select the program. 
in uh, the Golden Mask Festival, we have an expert board for the competition. All other programs uh, are guided by curators. And we can then th use the word curator as, uh, as it is, as such. But the expert board is a team uh, formed from in of individuals with their own opinions, but they need to make a collective selection and collective decision confidentially, not spreading the word and opinion of uh, each member of the team. So it's quite a dramatic story there, which might be quite unique or unique or rare. If, if I speak about the avant-garde projects and the question whether they should be on the list of uh, official awards that exist in every country, more or less, just like the day before yesterday, we spoke about it with my colleagues back home because one of our artists was awarded um, uh, in the category of innovation. And on his way back home, he kept repeating how I myself, so innovative, can get a, an award like this. It's a game, and you know, to me, you should know the rules of this game. As a producer, I know that he got the award. It will not do him bad. I tried to calm him, appease him, saying, forget about it. That's not up to you. We'll keep working with you. So this award, an award, any award, lets you promote your project and uh, the art you do. We know the rules of the game. We know how to apply for an award and how to get an award. And then uh, it's just something that helps you promote your art. And it does not inflict our f creative artistic freedom. I wanted to say that uh, when we define the people we need to invite and speak about the uh, festivals about freedom, it was clear that Golden Mask was not a safe choice because since it's the, the host of our conference, it was not obvious that it should be part of the, among all other festivals. And I was glad to hear that yesterday when I was leaving, I heard the term amplifier, that a festival is an amplifier of certain phenomenon. And the festival like Golden Mask, though it does not produce, does not create new productions, does not create new forms, it nevertheless becomes, its mission is amplifying uh, attention, prestige of this or that phenomenon. And luckily this year, thanks to fate, I'm part of the jury of the Golden Mask Festival and I could see how people professionally working in theater the musical theater con that consists of performers, uh, directors, composers, they argue, can this or that phenomenon production be considered an opera? Can this be ballet or contemporary dance? And the performances that were selected to be in opera or ballet categories are challenging us as professionals to define to treat, to find out, to build a, a relationship with these productions. How can we evaluate Manuskov's opera and Handel's opera? What is the criteria for nominations? They become very weighed ev at every step we make. We often question ourselves uh, about hierarchy. We're trying to destroy hierarchies that uh, inhibit our evolution, but we build new hierarchy structures. And I think I'm not uh, rebuking you. We are all part of the Golden Mask uh, movement, but Golden Mask is an example of how we demolish and create new and new structures. So perhaps now is the time to think about 
how since we live with those structures how do we rearrange them every year somebody in our community exclaims we need to get rid of the nomination's best performance this is something that would be a demolition of hierarchy we should not structure genres like drama opera dance we should get rid of nominations we should get rid of hierarchy in our own mind at least but it seems too radical for na for us today right every year somebody would offer this how will we live without nominations, without these pyramids we're so used to? Uh, we can be terrified in a different way. For some people, hierarchy is the only way to live, to know who is best, who is not the best. This competition element is something that uh, influences uh, an artist or suppresses an artist but I think uh, the way to regard nominations the good way is uh, to think about them as an instrument that you apply to a painting and it gets only clearer um, I think it's very interesting to think about it this way not like a sh uh, number of shelves where you allocate objects I think we should uh, give a thought or fantasize uh, at least if theater today, which is the fact, uh, creates incredible experience uh, that is impossible in our reality. For example, an experience of freedom, an experience of equality, an experience of uh, over uh, overruled, overrun uh, uh, injustice. Only in theater you can experience it. That's why theater is so popular here today. So maybe demolishing structures, uh, hierarchy in the Golden Mask is creating a new experience, an experience of democracy. What do you think? Lena is asking a rhetorical question because the administration of the Golden Mask has no power uh, in uh, destroying nominations. It's, but we can only think about it and talk about it. Maybe let's open the floor for comments in your work as programmers and producers of theater productions. Um, how, is it imp and also in applying for grants, is it important to you to def when it, that to define what kind of theater you do, what kind of genre you work, technically and conceptually? Is it important for you? Maybe Martin can say a few words. As I tried to explain yesterday, we try not to uh, not to put different artists or different um, positions into boxes and say, look, okay, this is whatever drama, this is performance, blah, blah, blah. And of course, sometimes it happens that when you want to apply for something and there is some kind of regulation that you have to fit something into these regulations, of course, then you have to adjust it. But I think it's always, yeah, but it's, I think it's always um, applying for something and doing a project then is on a different page. So, so you sometimes have to trick a bit. What are they? Yeah. Sorry, I, I just have a question because everybody here in the audience seems to know what you're talking about, Maria, when you say that our independence was endangered and we were able to maintain it. But I have no idea what that was. Would you mind explaining? <laughs> in uh, 2015, We 
faced the situation of about the uh, the people, the members of the expert council, the uh, expert board of the Golden Mask. From the very beginning of the Golden Mask, uh, uh, the selection of the expert board was a regular procedure. The expert board needs to be approved by the Council of uh, uh, the Council of Theatre Workers, which is like a trade union for theatre workers. It's not a uh, is not a state organization, it's a non-commercial organization. Uh, that have an administration and they are the founders of the Golden Mask Festival. So we need to, it's not the administration of the festival who chooses the expert board, it's the union of theatre workers. And since it's a professional organization, we counted on their professional qualities. It was key for us in defining the team of experts. But it's obvious that some processes are taking place in Russia when this or that theater is supported or not supported by the Ministry of Culture for some ideological reasons. So the people who select performances for the Golden Mask became an important issue for the Ministry of Culture and they see an opportunity to influence their uh, members of their expert board and to introduce some non-professional theatre critics in our rows or to I introduce some theatre critics that's, whose position was prejudice and not independent and it endangered the independence of the opinion of the uh, expert board. So we were fighting for the principle of uh, the way the expert board is formed, to have only experts there. Because we know it's a publicly open profession. They publicize their texts, they publish texts, they participate in uh, curators' work. The members of the union of theater workers travel to different cities, participate in discussions, so people who are part of it, they are visible, we know them. So to preserve the principle of uh, justice and honesty and we needed to fight and make some efforts in the Ministry of Culture for a few years uh, grabbed the right to delegate their candidates to the expert board of the Golden Mask. It lasted for a couple of years when we had to work with uh, with it, t trying to understand how it will work. And uh, we should uh, confess that n there was no catastrophe about it. N our mask, uh, our golden mask was not overturned. Maybe because the instrument has been tuned so well, because the experts need to see all the shows. They cannot select what they see and what they don't see. They should see everything that is proposed to them. Everything needs to be questioned. And they need to do it together as a group. And then certain mechanisms work. And then their, their final, uh, uh, final uh, selection is not, decision is not compromised. Even though there are some people who are ideologically a compromised that we do not uh, appoint the expert board but we meet the expert board that is appointed and organize their work throughout the year i hope i could answer your question i hope i i can add a little bit to this question the ministry of culture uh, is gives part of their budget to the golden mask festival so after the year 2012, when the um, uh, president was Putin, became Putin, he launched the conservative cause of politics and the change of allies. And the allies were... Друзья, пока готовится презентация Штефани Карп, пока есть несколько минут, я представлю ее. Штефани, интендант Рур Триенале, это один из самых... 
Rutuinale today is one of the most uh, famous festivals today. Uh, it emerged in 2002 and it's called Trenale, not because it happens once in three years, it happens every year and without, uh, within three years period, uh, Intendant uh, creates the program uh, Jorgen Frim, Jeram Willi Decker uh, then followed him, then Heiner Goebbels, and from 15 to 17, 2015, 17, Simons, Mr. Simons, and this Stephanie Karp. Uh, the last year festival was her debut at Rutrinale, and now this is the second year of her program that she executes. Um, yeah, as you heard, it's um, an intendant of the Rotrinale or the artistic director of the Rotrinale, you could say, is, has always a three years run, which, which in a way um, you would think would give you quite a lot of freedom, so you have a sort of carte blanche, that nobody can fire you, and you have the feeling you can do these three years uh, whatever you want to do. Um, but nevertheless, there is, of course, a sort of um, identity and um, um, a, a sort of task for this festival because it has very special conditions. And I want to take a little bit about. Uh, I want to talk a little about uh, a little bit about what does the Ruhr Triennale stand for, what is its given identity, and what are the audiences of the Ruhr Triennale. Um, it is, it is meant to be a festival, international festival of the arts, mostly performing arts, so music, theatre, dance, but also, uh, but also visual arts. And all the events of this Ruhr Festival take place in these very impressive post-industrial architectures in very, very huge venues. Um, just to give you an example, one of the smaller venues is 300 square meter. So that uh, most of the venues have the dimensions of football fields, I would say. And, it's, and they have a very, um, very special and very unique architecture. I'll show you a little bit later some pictures so that you know what I mean. Because um, this is a great challenge and a great, um, also a, a, a great opportunity, of course, for every artist, because the Ruhr Triennale is a, in the most parts producing festival, not a just inviting festival, but a producing festival and co-producing, of course. Um, it can also be a trap for, for artists because these venues are in, in themselves like sculptures and um, every artist has in a way to cope with these sculptures. And because my uh, my subject matter was, uh, what does it mean to program a big festival in times of moderation? Um, financially, of you can imagine it is, um, economically, it is uh, also a challenge because uh, just, be just because of the size. So uh, I can say that over the half of my budget, of my artistic budget, just goes into infrastructure and, uh, and, and technical costs because it takes a lot just to make these big venues, indus post-industrial venues, work uh, acoustically, visually. Uh, yeah, you can, everybody who has to do with music theater can imagine what it means to, to make an orchestra of singers really uh, uh, present in, in these sort of venues, not to talk about language. Language is a little bit difficult there. Um, um, so far, we did not have budget cuts, so that is not so main issue and shouldn't be the main issue of this talk. It's mostly financed by the by the regional government in uh, 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 quite a, a, a little part, of course, has been financed by ticket selling, and I try to get some money always by foundations, but that is in comparison to the main funding by the 
regional government, um, not so much, but still something. Um, it is, um, and I, I come here to the question of who, what is the identity and of these big festivals and who are the audiences. This area, this region in Germany, th is a post, uh, as I said, a post uh, um, industrial area of steel mining, uh, of, of uh, coal mining and steel industry. So most of the people there, and, uh, and these industries have been closed. So a big part of the people are um, without jobs, they are unemployed. It's a very, uh, meanwhile, a very poor area, a very diverse population, because in the areas, in the, in the time of the coal mining, many uh, people from Turkey or from uh, Poland and migrated to this region to find work. And uh, it's um, and now that the all this industry doesn't exist anymore, uh, the, the politicians undertook other attempts to make a new identity, to create a new identity for this area. And this new identity should be universities and cultures. But uh, we know all how, how long these processes take to until that is really really accepted and is really connected with the people. Uh, there are lots of small concert halls, theat regional theaters, etc. in this area. Um, but um, it is still a conflict. Uh, for instance, why do, does this area need such an expensive and sort of uh, high class uh, festival? In, in, a, in a region of Germany where all the regional theaters are underfinanced and uh, in which most of the independent uh, working uh, companies, um, as far as they exist, uh, don't get nearly next to nothing. And um, why, does, why does such a festival get such an attention by the politicians? The idea of the founders of this uh, festival was a bit naive idea, I think, um, <coughs> that they wanted to bring <coughs> in a region which was at that time, 50 years ago, sort of depressive and lost in its, uh, in its finding a new, a new identity that they wanted to bring some glamour and some beauty and uh, some, uh, yeah, the beautiful things uh, to this. Uh, uh, and they wanted, and, uh, and I think a really uh, a good thought in it was they wanted to prevent, uh, uh, they wanted to, uh, to prevent uh, that these beautiful architectures would be demolished. They wanted to kill they wanted to preserve them. And I think that is something the Lutheranale really has accomplished, that there was so much beautiful um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, performances now in these venues that uh, they are all in the hands now from uh, private, in, uh, private companies for during the rear year when there is not real Triennale, most of them are hired for entertainment um, and um, more commercial uh, things like fairs, etc. But uh, they are uh, they are there. Uh, they they are still as uh, and they are really they are really impressing. <coughs> they didn't um, they didn't fall apart and uh, we we have them. Um, I th my point is I don't think that the most people in this area uh, connect are connected to the festival. We have, of course, we have a, uh, the festival has the most visitors are from the region, but uh, they are exactly, they come from different towns. All these, uh, all these venues in which the festival takes, pla takes place are scattered in this, in a very huge region. So they are close to different small towns. So uh, all the visitors have to drive about <coughs> 40 minutes to one hour to visit a performance. That means something for, for um, curating and for programming, of course. So if you, ha if you drive an hour, you want, to really s you want to see more than a 40 minutes lecture performance. Uh, that's you want to have a, 
a bigger uh, um, experience. And um, but still, uh, it is the the people who are coming are the upper middle class people who still live in this area. Most of them quite old, older people. So. Uh, the doctors and lawyers and uh, professors living in this area. If I go to a tram, uh, I, I don't drive a car, which is a, a bit failure, a mistake, but I can't drive car in this area. But if, if I go uh, with public transfer <coughs> from one place to the other, I see the real people who are, are living there, and I can tell they are not our audience. And of course, there is the all the time, to me, the elephant in the room who says, um, these are the people who formerly worked in these venues where we are doing these beautiful things now, and they are not connected <coughs> to this festival, and that what could we do to, uh, to change that? Uh, and we all know that that, is, that that is has to do with education, and that is a, a very long process and even if I, uh, as I did last year, uh, if I program, I programmed last year a lot of work from, with artists from <coughs> African countries and <coughs> Arabian countries. <coughs> and even then, of course, the communities of people from African countries and uh, uh, Syrian and Iraqi and Afghanistan countries who all live in this region which has a very diverse population, as I said, they wouldn't come to the Ruhr Triennale, of course, because they just don't feel invited or because they even don't know that such a festival exists. And it's, uh, it's a, a very special work to make them know it. Um, so um, my focus um, uh, at, the, at the last year's edition uh, I, I had as a I, I, for, for all the three years I, I made one headline which means which says in between time and I mean with in between time um, that we have only a few years still in which we can decide <coughs> in which direction our societies will change because we all know all our <coughs> all our um, basic um, definitions of the societies we are living in um, will change very soon the in, in, in the economic way, in the ethical way, and in the political and social way. And uh, we have some years in which we can imagine in which we still have the time to, to intervene what this, how this changes, what this changes should be or in which we can still have a word in that. So. Uh, that is the, this in-between time, which is also a nice I think, aesthetical term because this in-between time never exists. It's a, so it is a space for I imagination. And, um, and I, I made one focus, which was uh, because that had not been done until now in the Ruhr Triennale to invite artists from out of Europe to have <coughs> put other uh, perspectives into the Ruhr Triennale. And this year, I, I, did the, I did the opposite. I, I still kept this focus, but on the center, I have artists who reflect their own European privileged white existence in a um, transcultural um, society. So I, I just show you some pictures now and talk a little bit about uh, last year, because of the coming year, I don't have pictures uh, because it's a program which is um, which will happen and didn't happen yet. Um, this um, working or not working? This is um, you see here in the background. You see um, that is one of the you see in the in the, in the very back the, uh, they call it the Millennium Hall. That is a very very big one. And this is the classical, in a way, mining um, architecture. And what you see here is um, that is a, 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 a sculptural work uh, by an artist from Nigeria, Nigeria and America, Olu Ogibe. And he made something very beautiful. He surrounded this 
uh, this building with a text. He is also he is a visual artist and a poet. He surrounded the building with a text which, which addresses to all children of the world to live in peace. And um, it is written in German and English and the Roman language. And because the park here in this park are many ch there are many young people and children every uh, uh, especially in summer who are hanging out there and so it's it's a nice place to to do that um, yeah and here here you see him as well and this yeah just to to show you a little bit of the size that is a part uh, only one part of this millennium hall and um, that uh, is that's the old part, that's a smaller one, which is next hall. Um, that's, um, that's another, yeah, I don't tell you the names because it doesn't make sense. Uh, just, um, that's one very beautiful, very old um, um, factory. So you, you see how, how huge uh, industry uh, architecture has been at those times. This uh, smaller one, that's is, that is the smallest um, um, uh, venue we have in which we make uh, special concerts, special contem of contemporary and avant-garde and experimental music. And here in the um, in the space uh, uh, in front of the Millennium Hall, in, uh, which is one of the biggest, uh, th there is a very barren space. Uh, and to which I invited a group of artists which are called Raumlabor Berlin and they created something which looked like an aeroplane which has broken or is reconstructed and in this aeroplane was sort of a festival center, they called it the third space and we invited there for parties, for concerts, for um, of course bar and food and all that so uh, just to give this um, to give this space, um, because you have to to um, to consider all these places are not in an urban context; they are outside of a city. They are always the mines were outside of of city contexts. So I, I try to give it a bit more life here, um, and and that worked, as you can see. Um, this is the, um, uh, when I said I made a, I one focus with artists from out of Europe, I may try to make a context between a new creation by William Kentridge, which is called The Head and the Load, and it's about uh, Africa in the First World War, which is a very hidden subject in still in European history. Um, and uh, a, a second huge uh, choreographic work by Sergei Koulibaly, he is a choreographer from Burkina Faso, and his work um, was related to um, the, hist the African history or the West African history of West African countries like Mali um, before the colonialism. So w what were the cultures there and what, what is our mythology which is working still in a contemporaneity of a contemporary uh, uh, modern um, uh, African person. And then I had a third work uh, uh, which was written by Mohammed al a Syrian author who came as a refugee to Berlin. And uh, is it is called The Factory. Uh, and it is about um, how a cement factory, uh, a Swiss and French cement factory, um, worked in during all the Syrian war and profited even from the ISIS and how the workers, uh, the Syrian workers uh, suffered and had to, uh, and, and, and it ended with a big monologue of the last one who uh, uh, fl had to flee to Turkey and then, and uh, you had the feeling when the actor was telling it, he was a refugee himself, that it was his own story he was telling. So that was a very, uh, um, um, very also very interesting, small but very interesting and challenging production. And, um, and uh, then we had another performance from South Africa, which was called Black Privilege by Man Mamela, a, a very interesting South African performer. 
Um, so this is the William Kentridge, and this one uh, that was in a, uh, also in one of these huge venues we have. Uh, you know, the Kentridge was a huge, huge success at c he because he combined great music, great contemporary music, in which he, uh, in which he um, took all the 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 influ the the, uh, the influence from African music and European music. He brought that together and he showed how that influ the one influenced the other also in the visual world and then he of course opened to the fantastic William Kentridge um, world of, of, of visual and uh, uh, combined with uh, s theater scenes and talking so and we did that in a in a huge um, power station venue so the the stage was 55 meters long and the audience sitting in the length of the stage. And that uh, you never can uh, show that really in, in, in pictures. That is a Serge May Koulibaly I talked about in another, uh, in another hall. That is the jury. That was, on a no that was in a sort of normal black box size theater. And that is Mamela. Yamza from South Africa, very great um, performer. Um, here I come to um, uh, another uh, uh, big production, which is uh, open another uh, another context, the context of new, uh, I would say, new fant new fantasy and aesthetics. That was Marthaler's uh, creation of the Charles Ives Universe Symphony. Charles Ives wrote all his life long on a, a try to write a, a, a universe symphony and that remained uh, f as fragments, as two, as two big fragments and lot of lots of little um, um, bits and pieces. And our conductor, Titus Engel, he brought all this material together because uh, our wish was that uh, it is not that we don't put other music into this evening than Charles Ives and uh, try to create what Charles Ives could have meant with the universe. And Christoph used the whole uh, Millennium Hall, which normally is uh, separated into three or four different halls. So he used this huge, huge space. The audience sat at a very steep tribune in the middle and all the music and the um, and the um, scenic work uh, was around it and there were also musicians here under the under the ceilings so up high here up high here and behind the audiences so you had the feeling that the whole uh, space was uh, 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 was one w w w w producing sound uh, yeah it, it, it did in, in fact produce sound by uh, by orchestras we had one, one uh, the, uh, the Bochumer, uh, so we had one symphonic orchestra and other extra Charles Ive orchestras and, um, and dancers and actors. And so that was that. And um, that was another another performance, also in a yeah they're all in these big venues. <laughs> that was the draft of the Medusa, and the director was Cornel Montruzzo. And uh, as you know, it's a, it's by Henze, and it's a, a nearly now classical work of contemporary music. And to in our times when refugees are arriving, and we have to decide whether we want to to, uh, to take care for them and be. I think uh, generally that the European have to give back so much to the countries they have exploited for so many decades that it is a scandal if it's a any discussion about refugees. Uh, I think we have to have to share with them and give them their, their space. So, and uh, the draft of the Medusa is in, is in a way like an enigmatic or a parabolic um, uh, uh, story about uh, about whether you whether you are giving to others or not. And, um, and that was um, a performance by Mariano Pezzotti, an Argentinian ar artist, also in, in one of, of our hugest spaces. And he created the story of a um, 
private city uh, so that all inhabitants in this city um, are uh, employees uh, at one company and the company owns a whole city in the jungle and the audience walked from and, and then he sh showed the uh, he showed the development of the city from very good of course at the beginning and as a progressive project and then uh, uh, the company didn't make profit anymore and then the they went away and the people were abandoned and many of them left the city others killed themselves and so we saw in six hours uh, the all the story and the poop uh, the, the audience walked from uh, you had for instance one story in this um, uh, 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 in this uh, little house in a, and uh, another story in this one and there were I think 12 or 40 those houses and you had to to walk from one to the other and follow all the stories of of the inhabitants and uh, I think it was aesthetically and uh, also um, yeah, in many aspects a very beautiful and um, also challenging work. Normally they were much more, uh, uh, these pictures were taken while we had the, while we had the last rehearsal. So uh, normally it was, there were lots of spectators. You have to, <laughs> here it looks a bit, and that was a also a huge um, dance production by Sascha Waltz in one of our biggest halls um, venues. Um, and the, the audiences, they were floating with the dancers. So, so the dancers, um, uh, took the audiences with them, and part of partly they set aside and saw it, uh, uh, and, and partly they, as, as you see here, they they were going with them. That was uh, the theater group, Nature Theater of Oklahoma. That was in a way a normal stage situation. So you were sitting on a on your at your place and looked at it, and um, and a very funny um, satiric. Um, reflection on what is art, what is what is performing art, and what means dance in nowadays. That is, uh, that is a devil who uh, has is the head of a company of a security company who have to take care of the last uh, uh, theater curtain, which is existing. And then they get um, um, and they are uh, some. Uh, uh, uh poor artists who are part of this, who are employed, employed by the security company. And then they get, a, then they get, then another Russian ballet company comes who are also unemployed and they promise to, uh, to take care of this curtain for much less money. So and there's a big fight between. <coughs> and um, that was a, that was a um, performance we did in the, in a street in Dortmund, in one of the cities. Um, that was not in one of the industry venues, but in a street. And um, the artist, Georges uh, Cameroon, he is a, um, the, he's a singer and the text writer of a punk band who switched to theater for some time. And he did a very beautiful performance. You can see here the audiences sat in this funny box, glass box, and the whole street was like uh, uh, the stage. And there were some performance always in the street, but also you, ha you had, uh, yeah, that's the, the audiences. And, uh, but you had at the same time, you always had this um, uh, street life in the performance. And that was increasing because of course all the, it's also a very diverse uh, um, part of town. And um, you had more and more all the children uh, uh, taking, uh, participating in the in the in the performance, and um, it it was a very generous, beautiful performance, reaching out to the people. I, I think one of the very few where where when it really uh, we could really realize to reach out to the people. Uh, so, but in the way that you were going to them, and uh, it was also. Um, very great text by George, who was, um, that's him, the artist, uh, who is a great poet, I think, um, who makes really very reflecting and poetic texts and music. And he was creating that uh, with, the, with the flow of the performance. Um, possibly I should stop here because it's too, that was a, um, um, that was a conference for about 
um, coming up this year really realized um, um <coughs> concept for about three days, which is called Training for the Future, in which different activists and politic political and aesthetical ash activists will build up panels for participants to train ourselves for the coming future. And um, it's part of all part of that. And that is the children play also did, which was called Welcoming Party. It was also about a refugee how and his arrival in our society. Um, um, yeah, so far. Um, Спасибо, Стефани. Three days. This three days panel where you were talking about the future. Was in these three days when you were talking about the future, uh, how did uh, the topic of uh, today's uh, festival emerged, of this year um, festival emerged? Because at the website of uh, Rutrinali there is uh, a manifest, um, manifest of this year festival, and it uh, talks about the crisis of representation, uh, and this is a direct question to to art. What is European democracy uh, that is a racist construction based on power um, and like, violence partially? And we, but we still need democracy and uh, we need to struggle for it, struggle for variety, for openness, and we need to create the democracy that uh, doesn't exist perhaps anymore and the time is running out. This is almost a quote from your manifest. How do you view this democracy? How do you implement it in uh, theatrical genres? Because uh, theatre is always a reflection, a contemplation about future. So your future program uh, of, of the festival or in some performances, how do they present this uh, new model of democracy, of the democracy of the future? What I wanted to say is you, you, in, you shut it, or at least in this, um, um, you, don't have, uh, you don't have a pit and you don't have a real stage. So you, you anyway, you are in an experimental move. In Yeah, I, I totally agree, and uh, I have to say that for, for me it's also very important to consider uh, artists from uh, Asia, Africa, uh, South America on the, the, the very same level than uh, artists coming from uh, Western or European uh, uh, countries. Uh, if we don't consider uh, everybody on the, on the exact same level uh, with the same criteria, uh, we, we, we are... Uh, yeah, 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 we, we are uh, doing again a uh, uh, neo-colonialist, neo -colonialist, uh, um, uh, we, we, we fall into a neo-colonialist uh, trap again. I don't argue with you at all. I just want to know who was the audience of the Syrian artist, who came to see him, uh, who will be the audience of those avant-garde Middle East and African artists? Germans or people from ethnic communities who come to see their compatriots? That That is my question. Yeah, of, of course, we, we try to to reach out to these communities. Um, uh, it's, it's quite complex because in the first case also the German uh, uh, unemployed guys uh, don't come to the German or German spoken or European um, art events. I think it's more a class discussion and education discussion than a discussion about whether somebody comes from, an artist comes from African or uh, Arabian country, um, the gap is always are people really connected with the arts at all or not? And I guess uh, the most people from African countries, for example, uh, except the one or three 
possibly um, lawyers from Kenya who are living in, but accidentally living in Bochum or Essen. <laughs> but apart from that, m most of people coming from Africa, they live in a refugee camp uh, in this area. As I told you, it's a very, it's a not, a, it's not urban. It's not. A, there are no big cities, and it's. Um, and it's um, a very poor area. And uh, I guess refugees have other things to do than to explore the festival program of the Ruhr Triennale. That is a sad fact, but it is a fact. We came here to talk about the management and the support of uh, the festival that festivals give to new forms. But nonetheless, I want to talk about uh, theatre utopians. You say that the Ruhr Trainale was a result of some utopian idea about their uh, desire to gentrificate a big uh, industrial uh, region that lost its identity. And la years later, since the festival started in 2002, we can say that it was a utopia, or you call it a naive idea. So if we uh, start talking about culture as a whole, the Ministry of Culture, State Culture in Europe, it started to develop after the Second World War, and it was guided by the idea that only culture, culture alone, can prevent new threats by fascism. And now looking at what's happening in the world where everything turns conservative again, and you say that we have little time in manifesto, you say that we need to build new democracy, we have little time for this. It sounds it very sad, if not to say scary. What do you think? It, it was a statement, there was no question. What is the, your personal utopia? What is the faith that guides you, that moves you when you work uh, at Ruhr Trainale? What is your personal, what is something that is not a disillusion yet for you? To make, uh, to widen our aesthetic and political perspectives and to have as many very different perspectives, because we, we, we live in the perspective of a Western world, and uh, to allow other perspectives to be discussed with ours, and uh, or to be also, um, that, that our perspectives have to be criticized, and to give an open space of any imagination for this. And of course, the, 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 the illusion is that as many people uh, as possible would be interested to make these new experiences. But of course, I'm not a, <laughs> uh, a festival can never be something like a political party with one program uh, which I want to bring to everybody. About Utopia, I have one comment. We had a talk with uh, um, film director Agnieszka Holland, who was also doing few chapters of um, uh, House of Cards. And she said, we need the positive utopia, because what we create in the Syria, the Frank Underwood, we have in the reality in the States now, like the bigger creature, meaning the president. So he said, now we have to build the positive utopia in the arts, and that would change the world. Uh, I don't know, does it happen or not, but the film maybe has this chance, maybe the theater too. But um, one uh, reflection is that uh, what uh, Stefanie said uh, about this, the situation with the democracy, we have nowadays almost everywhere that it's a bit in danger. I think this is also the situation even more difficult because we, to compare the situation uh, we are now in the transit between analog and digital era. It's like when that was the printing in the history. 
The consequence of the printing bi Bible was 100 year wars in Europe. So I don't know what would be the consequences of that era, but it, it really changed almost everything, how we are deep in the digital world now and what would change. Uh, other thing about the politicians is that all, not all the politicians, but many of them wants to put us into the situation that we think about nowadays. We don't think so much about the past, or if we think about the past, we think about the glory or, uh, or the um, special spots that we think that we are the, the, the uh, uh, nations in the history who are the, the not so uh, well received by the others, but we don't think so much about the future. And this, what we do now, is we think about nowadays and we try to be a bit um, not uh, thinking about the perspective. I mean, that's what they try to do with us. And in this case, role of art is, has always been like uh, to be a bit prophetic and to be a bit uh, challenging, and especially in this uh, period that, that we uh, are now. So. Um, I don't know. We need this positive utopia. Positive Frank Underwood. Yeah, uh, I will say that uh, maybe maybe the, 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 the role of uh, the festival, uh, of the festivals, uh, our role is to, to provide a, a platform for, uh, for, for the expression of, uh, of these uh, utopias. And artists uh, express these uh, various, uh, as various as possible uh, utopias, and uh, they, they they express new new imagination, and and our 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 uh, role is to uh, provide the the platform to 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 the artist for for this expression. Спасибо, Samuel. Thank you, Samuel. I would like to ask Stephanie. This year, you invite Sharon Eyalt, uh, the choreographer from Israel, with his performance. But as far as I know, last year you had a scandal because of uh, the Israeli issue. Could you tell us all about that situation? There was a Swedish group called... Uh, I'd invited a band, uh, not, it was not even me, it was my music curator. So we invited a Scottish band called the Young Fathers. And they are, they make texts uh, against racism. That was one of the reasons, it's a very young band. That, uh, and they suited to the program music wise and especially um, and, um, uh, because of their text against racism in Europe. And um, as I can say, every second uh, band in the UK, uh, they had signed a BDS, which I didn't know. I didn't even, I never paid a lot of attention to this BDS thing. <coughs> and uh, we didn't, we didn't, uh, uh, we have to say, uh, uh, I think we didn't, never felt that there should be any difficulty because they had played in Cologne, in Munich, in, in many other places just before, a uh, short time before we invited them. And three, uh, two months after we had published our program, uh, uh, one of these social media guys, uh, in this case a woman, um, do you all know what trolling is? There are these trolls um, who are using the social media to attack people, to, to blame them for something. In this case, they blamed the Ruhr Tribunale to be anti-Semitic because they invited a band which has signed a BDS. BDS movement is a boycott, de-investment. It's, it's a movement um, founded by some Palestinian um, intellectuals who um, try to find a way of non-violent protest against the Israeli politics against the Palestinians. And uh, one of these, uh, one of the, uh, uh, they try to find a way of boycotting, boycott, boycott strategies. 
and uh, so many artists in um, even Israeli ar Israelian intellectuals support this movement, those who, who are critical with the Netanyahu uh, regime. Um, uh, and uh, as I found out later, it's, it's very, very, in, in, uh, if you if for instance, Judith Butler, Naomi Klein, so many, many, many intellectuals and artists in the context of Britain and Belgium uh, signed there. In, in Germany, of course, we are, most people are, are trying to, I, I also, I, tr I al always try to make a big circle around all the Middle East subject matter because of our history. And I didn't want to come into trouble or uh, conflicts. And um, you have this shame and guilt story uh, in your head. So one doesn't want to criticize Israel at the same time. I cannot say that I blame people uh, like the Palestinian people, and if you if you see how they have to live, and if you see the wall in Ju Jerusalem, and if you see all the checkpoints, you cannot um, deny that they have their reasons to protest. Huh? <laughs> and of course, all the all the communities and all the in all parts of the world where where people are um, uh, uh, post-colonial critical, uh, for them. Uh, uh, let's say for African intellectuals or for South American intellectuals, for them, uh, the Palestinian conflict is a sort of colonial conflict in their perspective. So I, um, I um, first I, I thought I have to cancel this band uh, and then I announced that I don't cancel them and apologize for this canceling. Uh, the politics of course wanted the German politics that I cancel the band and said, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I see, I, uh, how can I invite uh, 10 Arabian artists from Arabian world and at the same time say uh, I, I cancel a band who, who signed at BDS just because they signed at BDS and that the festival has really to be open for some other perspectives. That's, uh, uh, I have a red line if somebody is really anti-Semitic, of course, but what I, what I was annoyed about is that immediately in the social media and all these shit they produce all the time there, in this, these trolls in the social media who want to make somebody like me at that moment a target of their aggressions. Um, this band was called the anti-Semitic band, the Young Fathers. It's, it's a lie. They are not anti-Semitic. Why are they anti-Semitic? They, they, they Israel is not at all their subject matter. If you read their texts, it's against uh, uh, their texts are very polemical against uh, politics in the UK uh, towards black people. That's what they are. Uh, 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 what uh, that is? What is it, is it about? It's about in their music or in their texts. And I also uh, deny to say that BDS is par excellence anti-Semitic. No, they are criticizing the present Israeli government. That doesn't make them automatically anti-Semitic. So, but German politicians, they are very fearful, um, in which is to a certain degree understandable. And uh, so they, um, they made as a consequence of all this conflict, which didn't end up. We had then a big discussion during the World Triennale, open discussion, public discussion with supporters of BDS and uh, politicians who are against BDS and also one artist who would not support BDS and me. So, and in these discussions, I have to say, uh, this discussion, there was a, s you could really see the, <laughs> uh, the uh, relations. There was a small BDS group with hand handmade little transparents and the big group coming in big cars of, of I wouldn't, I, I, I'm even sure that they were not at all Israel, none of them was really Israeli. Uh, the so-called pro israeli supporters who really looked totally like paid trolls and who were shouting with every war word I was saying and having big banners and um, sh uh, shouting down every argument. It, uh, so, but it was, still, it was still a discussion which was quite constructive, I think. But as a consequence of all that, um, the government of the region made, made a law uh, which says um, that in future 
and every artist and every group of people uh, would not be allowed to um, to announce anything in this area of Germany who are either organized in BDS or have a sympathy with the aims of BDS, which means if you take that really literally, uh, you cannot invite any more African artists and intellectuals, South American artists and intellectuals. You cannot invite Judith Butler. You cannot invite Naomi Klein. You cannot uh, invite a Belgium artist Alain Platel, who is one of the founders of the Ruhr Triennale. And that is, at the moment, my real great problem. And I feel really censored by that, because um, uh, that means uh, I'm, I'm, in a way, forced to uh, scan every artist, what he did, apart from what he is doing on stage. And there, I think, uh, it starts to be, I, w I have to say, uh, if I talk about shrinking spaces, sh shrinking democrac democratic spaces, I, I feel that at the moment. I feel like in a totalitarian, totalitarian system in this aspect. И как вы ведете себя в этой новой политической реальности? Israeli artist who is very critical against her own government and says that, so we will see what will happen. And, uh, and in my last year, I will, um, I will go into the conflict, I think. I, I, will not, uh, uh, I will not look out for it, but I will not stay away. So uh, for instance, if, if I want to uh, invite Alain Platel, who supported me very much in this time, was always an artist of the Ruhr Tribunale, And uh, so I will not um, mm. uh, forbid myself to invite him. Uh, I think that uh, th th there must be a point where it's enough. Uh. And other institutions in Germany respect this now? Uh, there are many other institutions, or uh, they have other regional governments. So for instance, hmm? yeah, I'm under the regional government of North Rhine-Westphalia, it's called. It's in Dusseldorf headquarter. And And it's, I think in the most, the most colleagues of mine, they um, try to hide a bit away. And if, uh, for instance, those who had invited the young fathers before me, they were not just, nobody had an interest to target them. So everybody tries to, uh, I don't know why they targeted me, uh, but now that it happened, I have to be very careful because All those people who wanted that, I have to step back. They just wait for the next opportunity. And I don't want to make it too easy for them, of course. It's not only the case uh, in your region. I, I think uh, in the music field, uh, there are also clubs in uh, Berlin, in Leipzig, who avoid to, uh, to book artists who uh, sign uh, this. Yes, in the, in, the pop, in the pop business, it's quite... Um, yeah, in even in the electronic underground uh, field. Yeah. And uh, one has to say that part, part of the left, it's not only the right wing, but also uh, one part of the left, this stupid uh, Deutsch, what are they, anti-Deutsche? Uh, they, they made it their identity that they are not criticizing Israel at all. So if, uh, that, that is totally forbidden. Whatever Netanyahu would do, uh, uh, um, Never cr that, that they wanted to have this specialty, and so they are totally against BDS, of course. But that I think it's a very academic, uh, um, and uh, that is a war between the one pop culture scene and the other pop culture scene. And I, I'm not, I, I'm sorry, I'm not, I, I don't even want to know it in detail <laughs> because <laughs> it's so interesting. <laughs> um. Yes, of course, I think th that these are the issues that then starts to be again um, outside of the real political context. It, they become like an artistic or intellectual platform for fighting against some other things that are not maybe re related directly, but 
um, before was a question about um, uh, the utopias that that art can can pr can con construct or or uh, offer, but I think that the real this is like a motivation or inspiration and bravery that art can bring and some conception that conceptions that art can make. But the real work of change is dull, and it's really in details and it's really in small things and also I in important decisions regarding also your situation that happened last year that um, that then calls for a radical decisions also because you had to choose what you will say or publicly support or cancel or not cancel the band i'm talking also out of the perspective that this year in the in the festival we're inviting israeli and palestinian artists and we got in some some complicated situations around the BDS uh, also because we were it was so different timings and context how this happened but um, it's a complex thing <laughs> and and I understand y your feeling because I have it the same that I want to make three steps back and maybe not have to do nothing with that <laughs> because it's too complicated and in one phase you don't feel involved in that but actually we are uh, so um, yes for, for my experience and talking with the artists that are coming the palestinian artists w not the artists but um, some of the community wanted us not to invite the israeli artists um, but then we were speaking with both of them they are okay to be programmed in the same in the same festival in the same program but they are asking us, both of them, that they can, um, that they don't want to speak publicly together, and that they it's around uh, 40, uh, 45 uh, projects uh, spread in the 10 to, to 12 uh, different uh, venues and also uh, sometimes uh, public uh, space. Uh, so the, the the streets you you, you mentioned. Um, the, the venues are a mix between uh, institutional uh, places like uh, theaters, uh, museum, clubs, and also uh, empty, uh, empty spaces or uh, post-industrial uh, uh, venues that we occupy for uh, in-situ uh, projects. Uh, the whole festival uh, gathers uh, 7,000 uh, visits, approximately. So we, we are a small, uh, a small uh, event. Uh, the, the formula of, uh, of Les Urbaines is, uh, is quite unique. It's uh, an entirely, entirely free of charge uh, festival for the audience, uh, focusing uh, on the discovery of new aesthetics uh, in the arts um, we without, uh, without uh, headlining arts. And, um, and the artists are programmed uh, only once at the festival, so the program is uh, entirely uh, renewed uh, each year. And it mixes uh, visual art, um, performing arts, music, uh, club culture too. The, the festival defines uh, itself uh, as a laboratory promoting uh, risk-taking projects, uh, as a platform for emerging artists to meet, create uh, new, new networks between them and also with uh, professionals and uh, curators. So du during the, the festival, the city of Lausanne becomes the, the, the place of uh, an important uh, gathering for, for these emerging artists, both Swiss and international. Uh, the, the program includes uh, about one third of uh, Swiss artists and two thirds of uh, international artists. It's really important to, to, to focus on both local and uh, international scene to, to, to have them uh, yeah, meeting uh, during the, 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 the festival. Les, les Urbains aim, aims to provide a great public uh, exposure to, to these uh, innovative uh, artists, acting as a, as a stepping stone toward a future collabora collaboration with institutions and hopefully with uh, bigger institutions. Uh, regarding the, the focus of Les Urbains on uh, emerging aesthetics, on artistic innova innovation, it makes sense then to have uh, an approach as transdisciplinary as uh, possible. Uh, 
Uh, that's why we, we don't use uh, disciplined uh, labels uh, like uh, living arts or uh, theater, dance, uh, visual arts, uh, music in uh, our communication. Uh, the, the, the festival is, is uh, structured as a, as a foundation, so we have a foundation board and uh, a co-direction for, for the executive uh, work, uh, both artistic, administrative and uh, organi organizational. Uh, Isaline and myself are the co-directors since uh, 2017, so we are quite new. And uh, as you can imagine, it would be difficult for uh, Isaline uh, and me to, to curate the, the whole 40-45 uh, uh, projects. Um, in our transdisciplinary perspective, uh, we work with a cura curatorial team. Uh, we are both part of uh, this uh, curatorial committee, of course, and we both have uh, multidisciplinary uh, sensibilities. Uh, we also have our field of uh, specialization. Isaline is uh, specialized into uh, living arts, performing arts, and uh, I'm specialized uh, into music and, uh, and uh, club culture. Um, before being uh, co-directors, co uh, Isaline and I were uh, already part of the curatorial committee of the festival since uh, 2014. This is Isaline. Um, and <laughs> Um, Isaline worked uh, for uh, several theatre companies and uh, I also worked uh, in, the, in the living arts uh, field for uh, several companies, but my background is uh, definitely uh, in the music field. Uh, I also co-run um, uh, a music label called uh, Danse Noire, uh, focused on the prospective electronic music in our uncertain times. So the... the, the the aim of this curatorial committee uh, first uh, is to have uh, people involved uh, in the curation that are specialized in the, in the various art forms presented uh, by the festival. Then for, for this year's uh, edition, like, like last year, we have uh, three more people uh, involved in this uh, committee. Uh, Annelise Legac, uh, she, she is a performance uh, artist uh, and choreographer from uh, France. She's based in uh, Marseille. Um, she has a solo practice uh, as well as a collaborative uh, performance project. Besides her artistic practice, she also has a curatorial uh, experience since she uh, co-organizes since uh, uh, four years now, uh, a festival called uh, OK Confiance. Uh, between the, the fields of uh, performance, Visual arts, music, food, uh, OK Confiance is built uh, on the notions uh, of sharing uh, an experience, uh, building a, a community. It's a do-it-yourself project uh, emerging from the alternative uh, French uh, scene. Deborah Joyce uh, Allman, she, she is an artist and a curator based uh, between Lausanne, Basel and uh, London. Uh, she co-founded the, the art space uh, One One in uh, Basel. Uh, Basel is in Switzerland. Uh, it's actually more than an art space presenting uh, installations in the field of uh, visual arts. I, it, it aims to be a, a platform in both contemporary art and music fields uh, with uh, shows, but also uh, music events and uh, mixed seri uh, series uh, broadcasted on uh, SoundCloud. The, this is... Uh a small uh, description on uh, their web website, with the also with this uh, different section uh, shows, uh, mix series, etc. And Matthias Ringenberg, uh, he's the last uh, member of our committee. Uh, he defines himself as a multidisciplinary uh, performance artist, working with uh, live performance, uh, music, video, and uh, installation. He works under the name of uh, Price, uh, hybrid fictional character. Uh, yeah, you can't read anything, but <laughs> he, he's based uh, in, uh, in uh, Zurich and uh, his practice seeks to, to question, uh, it's explained uh, briefly um, on, uh, on the in the phrase uh, on in this text. Uh, he, he seeks to, to question the, the institutional boundaries uh, between performance art theater and popular uh, music. So Annelies, 
Deborah and Matthias have a practice and interests that are transdisciplinary on, uh, on many levels. Uh, they all have uh, transdisciplinary knowledge and uh, tastes, which was a key point to include them uh, in the artistic committee. The, the way we organize our curatorial, curatorial uh, work is quite open and, uh, and flexible. Uh, we meet around three, uh, four times a year uh, and for, for a day. Each curator comes with uh, propositions uh, related to their fields of uh, expertise. Isaline proposes mainly performing arts projects. I propose mainly music projects. Annelies proposes mainly performing arts projects, but also music and sometimes in installative projects. Deborah proposes visual arts and, mu uh, and music projects and also give uh, insights for uh, performance projects. And uh, Matthias proposes performing arts projects and also music ones to, to, to tell it briefly. So we, we discuss these uh, propositions uh, regarding our different sensibilities and above all regarding the general uh, criteria of the festival which, which drives our uh, curatorial work. Are the projects uh, proposed really emerging? Uh, can we say that they deal with uh, new aesthetics? Correlated uh, to uh, this, these uh, questions, um, we have to make sure that uh, artists are not too well known and uh, established for, uh, for Les Urbaines. Uh, that they have not shown uh, their work in bigger institutions, uh, in bigger institutional venues, uh, etc. It's, it's very important since the, the, the mission of the, the, the festival is to operate as a platform, uh, a stepping, stepping stone for uh, emerging artists. So if this main criteria of uh, new aesthetics is uh, fulfilled, if artists are not too established uh, already, the, the different curators um, are quite free in the, in the programmation uh, process. Uh, it means that if a curator is 200% uh, uh, convinced that we need to, to present uh, a specific project at the festival, even if the rest of the, the, the committee is not as enthusiastic uh, as the curator proposing uh, this project, he or she has the, 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 the last word. We work like this for a simple reason. If we only program projects that make consensus uh, between the, the, the five of us, we will have a more uh, standardized and uh, certainly a li less risky uh, program. Of course, as uh, co-directors, Isalin and me have the overall uh, views. Our mission is to have a, a well-balanced program and that's a criteria too when we proceed to a final selection. But it's very important to, to, to keep the, 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 the great freedom of the curators in the decision uh, making uh, process, to give space to uh, the different uh, sensibilities, knowledges and networks of the different curators. Regarding networks, uh, working with uh, the, the, the various networks of the curators is a, is a, is a key point. Uh, and that's why we also uh, need to change these curators uh, quite often. Uh, they're part of the curator committee during one, two, three or four years uh, maximum. Uh, if we focus on, on new aesthetics, we, we, we need to re regularly uh, change our networks, uh, of course. So correlated to uh, the transdisciplinary uh, approach, the, the, the collective uh, dimension in the in the way we we curate is uh, is crucial. Uh, I assume that th there is an obvious link between the the curation uh, in a transdisciplinary uh, perspective and the collective and uh, collaborative way of uh, of uh, working. The the outputs of uh, this way of uh, of curating uh, based uh, on collective uh, collaborative. Uh works allows us to uh, propose a program that uh, mixes uh, disciplines uh, forms uh, in the different uh, venues of the of the festival each of the uh, of the venues is not uh, dedicated to a single art form we we mix them in the in the in the venues so in the club uh, le, le romandie is one uh, one of the the clubs we have a uh, live 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 show concert uh, dj set uh, as yeah as you can uh, expect uh, in, in a club, and also uh, more uh, performative uh, forms uh, like uh, Jija San. Uh, she, she's a choreographer and she, she, she did this performance 
that was completely silent uh, during uh, the first 40 minutes uh, in in the club at uh, at uh, it was yeah midnight, and uh, it, it worked. Um, in the in the museum uh, space uh, called uh, Espace Arlo, uh, we have installative uh, installative uh, works, but also uh, more performative uh, forms. Uh, this was an uh, audio uh, visual um, DJ DJ set uh, conference from uh, Crystal Mass. Um, and in our theaters, like uh, Arsenic, uh, we also mix uh, between uh, different uh, performative uh, forms. Uh, this year, we'll, uh, we, we, we want to have uh, more installative uh, work too in, uh, in this, uh, this uh, theater. But last year, we only uh, had uh, performative forms and, uh, and sound uh, music uh, forms. Like uh, like Cecilia, uh, this, this was um, uh, a live uh, act uh, with the the, the audience uh, seated uh, on, uh, on 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 the seats in a very uh, yeah classic uh, the theatrical uh, uh, situation. And uh, in the in the different uh, other spaces uh, like uh, post-industrial. Uh something like this uh, we also we also try to to, to mix uh, as much as uh, as, as possible um, with this uh, collective uh, process uh, with our different uh, expertises we also uh, able to program uh, multidisciplinary artists that are accurate in different art fields uh, we, we offer them the, the opportunity to uh, for for these uh, multidisciplinary artists uh, to present their different works in the in the frame of the festival, regardless the disciplines uh, boundaries. So, by example, uh, last year we had uh, Brandon Covington Sam Sumana, uh, who did this installative uh, work at uh, Espasalo, and as N Polenta, he also have uh, has a, a music uh, practice. Uh, he he did a, a live sh live show uh, at uh, in one uh, of the club uh, clubs called uh, Le Bourg. And the, 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 the two projects really, uh, really uh, interact and uh, there, are, there, are, there are connections between, uh, between these projects. And in it's interesting for, uh, for the audience to, to, to know the artist uh, regarding these different uh, practice practices um, and, uh, and also for, for, for the artist to have the opportunity to, to present uh, at the same event these different practices. Uh, usually, he uh, they uh, sorry uh, um, don't 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 present uh, the the different uh, practices uh, at the same uh, at the same time and uh, and place. Uh, we also had uh, Bully Fay Collins uh, who presented uh, a performance uh, a, a piece and um, and a live show uh, in a club. Uh, Chelan Oestruck uh, also uh, presented a uh, conference performance and was part of the uh, exhibition uh, at uh, Espasalo. So, in conclusion, uh, we can say that uh, proposing a transdisciplinary platform for artists uh, implies a form of uh, curatorial work that is collective and collaborative. And I can also say that it's not always easy to, to profile this uh, transdisciplinary uh, approach uh, as a festival uh, entirely free for uh, its audience. Uh, we, we, d we don't sell tickets, so we don't have uh, money uh, wi with this. Um, our whole budget is supported by uh, funders, public and private. Uh, not sponsorship, uh, but uh, private uh, foundations. Uh, they, they are plenty of, uh, of foundations uh, in uh, Switzerland. We are lucky. Um, and in, the Switzerland, in Switzerland, like uh, almost every everywhere, uh, most of the founders are, are still organized regarding uh, disciplines. They have a, a dance commission, uh, a theater commission, a music commission, a visual arts commission. So 
in our funding uh, research, uh, we still have to separate and organize, organize uh, our documents uh, and uh, presentation uh, files by artistic disciplines. And uh, it's even more problemat problematic for uh, artists. Uh, Matthias uh, Ringenberg, uh, who, who is part of uh, the, the committee, by example, had uh, difficulties uh, recently to receive money from uh, the, the, the city of uh, Zurich. The, the dance the dance uh, commission was uh, saying that uh, his project isn't really dance and uh, the theater commission was saying it's not really th theater so this this uh, in between is uh, sometimes very problematic for uh, artists regarding the, the the funding so if we think that innovation I is drive th is drives sorry by uh, transdisciplinarity uh, not only, of course, but in my opinion, it's, uh, it's an important source of uh, innovation. Uh, our goal now uh, could be to uh, encourage the